join a company. The two other person that struggles here, yeah? Bring him good energy. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. Welcome to Crypto OGs. I'm here in Crypto OGs are uh, enjoying the Ethereum Barcelona. I have a good friend here, Chris Bill, from Bangles Car, from the Bangles Group. So thank you so much, Chris, for coming to the show. Um, we've been, in, I, I think that you around the whole event, recording yeah. content, but then you brought the Bangles Car before. Talking about Bangles Car, let's talk about the story of Chris, the Crypto OG. How long have you been in crypto, Chris? Um, uh, officially, I've been in crypto for just over two years. Okay. Um, I traded a little bit on centralized exchanges before that. Okay. And um, I ended up receiving the Bankless DAO airdrop, which got me level one membership to the DAO. And that got me contributing. It taught me how to form proposals and create roles within a DAO. Um, and from there, I started contributing in different projects and different guilds and different departments. Um, um, so currently I work in a, a few different projects within Bankless DAO. Okay. One of them is um, Fight Club, which is, okay. uh, we're trying to democratize. Is that with Brad Pitt? No, it's not with Brad Pitt. No, the other Fight, fight Club VC. Okay. And we're trying to democratize VC investing. Okay. So teach people how to invest in companies. You know, I think a, vi a big part of crypto is speculation and everybody wants to invest in the next big thing but there's a lot of due diligence that goes into that so we're we have an education track where we help train people uh, to become analysts and then we also have our own deal flow so you purchase an NFT you get access to the deal flow and the education um, I'm also doing work with the global events team and that's okay. what brings that us here good. yeah bank list out global events so what we do is we um, get in touch with different events around the world and we offer them our services, media, interviews, etc., cetera, um, in exchange for some exposure on the Bankless DAO social media side of things okay. and also bringing our valued contributors into this ecosystem to help participate. So doing good. Uh, we've been working with them for two years now okay. uh, from here at ETH Barcelona. So, you know, we're excited to be partnering with them at these sorts of events. Um, and we do other events all around the world. We've done... Tokyo, Seoul, uh, Latam. We've done events in ETH Safari, so Africa, what? all around Asia, United States. We're yeah, we're everywhere. Tal NFT Tallinn, uh, Berlin, Turkey. Wow. Yeah. So we we go uh, as any anywhere that we can make it, we'll go. You go. And it's I don't personally go. We have we send people who are local. Okay, uh, and that's the beauty part of, of part of the DAO. Exactly. That's the beauty of having a decentralized organization Wow um, yeah and what I've really been pushing and plugging here is bankless card bankless that's card. you know bankless card can I see it yeah take it take a look that's our with our guerrilla marketing campaign um, okay. so we've been working on this project for quite a while within bankless DAO, and can we're starting it? yeah of course yeah, keep you. that yeah I'll give you more after this to yeah. add to your friends um, what we're doing with bankless card is creating a, a payment system that allows DAOs and communities to fund themselves in a passive way and also allows contributors to earn DAO tokens instead of cash back. Okay. And Chris, tell me, okay. I got to know you in this event, and I think that you're doing amazing stuff as a DAO, and obviously you have a great personality, you are very approachable, people start to like like you around, because you are helping the community, not only of, of Bangladesh DAO, you know the whole community as such in Web3, like for example here in Ethereum, but tell us what you were doing before crypto, what, how was your life before, what you were doing? Yeah, so um, I'm actually a photographer by trade. Okay, that way the, the big camera there. Yeah, that's why I got, brought my big guns here. Um, I I started out as a photographer when I lived in Spain quite a long time ago, maybe 15 years ago. I was working in an Apple computer store and a lot of my clients uh, were professional. You were the genius. The yeah, genius bar. It, yeah, similar. It was a, it was a reseller network. Okay. Um, and so it was an official Apple.
Apple store, but it was before Apple actually arrived in Spain. They didn't even have oh, an Apple store wow. in Spain. So I worked for a company called Benetac, and you know, shout out to anybody from Benetac, like any Benetac. of my friends from back in the day. Um, so while I was there, I met these these really interesting photographers of all walks of life. You know, everything from wedding photographers, event photographers, portrait photographers, commercial photographers, and they were all coming in to have their Macs fixed. So I was more of a sales guy, but I did the odd sort of memory, hard drive swap, that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, I did the same back in the days. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and so from there, it was a natural progression to move into the sort of technical side of photography. Uh, I'm a real tech head by, by nature. Um, I ended up moving to the UK okay. in 2011, okay. um, where I, I currently live now. And um, I had a sort of interim job while I was there. And then I went full-time photography in 2012. Wow. Yeah, okay. so I've been doing that up until the pandemic hit, when obviously it was hard to get out and do photography. Yeah. So I got started dabbling with crypto trading again. And that's when you know the next bull market hit. And that's what sucked me back into this ecosystem. Because it's actually very interesting because my wife is a photographer. Um, you know, photographers are very passionate about art. About yes. It's, and obviously, when you get into technology, it's totally different. Because when you're in photography, you are just about the emotions, about having a great picture. How was the transition from photography like to crypto? Like, was it straight away? Or did you find, you, did you find your first cryptocurrency on social media? How was it that like you first approached? Well, so my first exposure to crypto, I, you know, I really missed out back in 2013. I had an opportunity to, to buy some Bitcoin. Oh, okay. And it wasn't much Bitcoin at the time. It was only like one and a half thousand Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was worth about five thousand um, dollars, and I thought, you know, I don't want to go through the process of sending my money. To somebody random. Yeah, well, I had to send it to a, a bank in Estonia, and I wasn't fully comfortable oh, with that. Wow. And so I, I not decided. Like now. Yeah, I decided not to do that. But you know, if I had done that, and I had that thirty million dollars today, I would probably wouldn't be here meeting would. all these amazing. You, people. you probably would be in your own booth. Yeah, it could possibly be yeah, in yeah, my yeah. own booth. But you know what? It's all good because it's not about, for me, like, yes, I would love to profit. You know, who doesn't want to be comfortable and, and, and be able to pay their bills without worrying? Um, and, you know, crypto can can do that if you're, if, if you invest at the right time. But what it really does for me is it enables me to connect with people on a different level. You know, this is about ownership. It's about community ownership it's about uh, being a part of something that you know is bigger than you but you still have a voice you still have right? a voice so um, I, I actually am from the States I left the States in 2002 okay. um, and at that time there was a lot of controversy in the political sphere uh, George Bush won the election over Al Gore and I you know I it was too much I don't like to get political but I know that there there was a lot of accusations of, of voter fraud. Uh, and, and crypto, I feel, has the opportunity to change how we vote publicly, right? Or how we vote for public goods, yeah. how we vote for our leaders. And it also keeps us more accountable, right? Your, your lobbying and your funding is more public. Yeah. At the same time, it's also a way to maintain your privacy. Yeah. So it brings the best of both worlds wow okay very interesting story i never met a photographer that jumped to crypto and become very successful and part of a DAO. let's talk a bankless it sounds like a great product and service that you're launching but let's talk about bankless as such like the DAO. how, mm -hmm. how that works if somebody wants to join the DAO. yeah so uh, bankless was started by the the founders of the bankless podcast david and ryan uh, they got together with some of their core uh, friends and followers and they created a, a decentralized organization that has the mission to onboard 1 billion people actually oh, the wow. mission is not that the mission is to help create decentralized financial on-ramps okay so wow. so DeFi, it's the future and we're here to help the world go bankless right I like that. yeah obviously the 
the name is perfect. Yeah, exactly. And so while we're definitely interested in getting more contributors at Bankless DAO, if anybody wants to co contribute at Bankless DAO, just go to bankless.community and hit the join button. There, there, there will be instructions on how to get the bank tokens. If you don't want to be a full member and you just want to come check it out, you can get a guest pass. You can tag me, the NF Thinker, at NF Thinker. Um, NF Thinker. NF Thinker, yeah. Not, not NFT Thinker, just NF Thinker, NF -thinker yeah, okay. non fungible. Um, so when you're in Bankless DAO, you'll find an ecosystem there where you'll be able to contribute as a developer, as a marketer, as a writer. We have a super healthy writer's guild, very healthy marketing department. We have loads of um, loads of OG governance OG. contributors. Yeah, loads of OGs there. Exactly. And you know, you'll come and you'll find a place where where you'll fit in without a doubt. Um, without a doubt. Without a doubt. DAO. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and not without a DAO. You'll be with a DAO. <laughs> um, what we're really interested in, though, is building these DeFi on ramps, right? So if you're working in a project that's helping accelerate the ecosystem, helping accelerate Web3, come get involved with us because we'll be able to provide you with contributors. We'll be able to provide you with a place where you can come and discuss your projects we host demos every Wednesday you can come and demo your product to our community and we send them out to the Fight Club Network and we post that on the YouTube channel so what we're really trying to do is spread the message of Web3 the core message of decentralized networks uh, network effects uh, digital ownership all of the above amazing and also guys you're doing a podcast or you were doing a podcast well so David and Ryan have the Bankless podcast, and that is more of a, um, a, I guess you could call it a centralized entity. They they have their own limited company, uh, and they do their their thing. Um, but a lot of us, you know, we watch it and we participate in their talks, and okay. we buy the NFTs. But within Bankless DAO, we actually have this thing called the Podcast Hatchery, okay. and we help people create their own podcasts. So within Perfect. Bankless DAO, we have Making Bank. Big shout out to the Making Bank team. Someone needs a job. Drost, a lot of you guys out there, you know, doing hard work. Then we also have Crypto Sapiens. I don't know if you might have heard yeah. of Crypto Sapiens. Great name, Bill. Yeah, great name. Shout out to Humpty and crew who uh, produced that. Rachel Briz uh, Brizenden, who's also producing that now. Uh, she's from Opolis, but now helps uh, helps with Crypto Sapiens. We have uh, Bankless Africa. They've got their own podcast. It's called Sat. Wow. So if you speak pidgin uh, and you're based in Africa or you want to find out about what's happening in the African crypto system, uh, scene, go check out Satsangwe. Uh, we have uh, spun off uh, Quora, which is a podcast that used to be called Bounty Hunter. Okay. Um, so shout out to Brandon Nolte, who's the creator of that, and his partner, uh, Samantha Marin. She and he now have Quora, which is a lot bigger than just a podcast. Um, but we have yeah, some other podcasts also in the works. Amazing. Uh, maybe maybe crypto just we can do some collaboration together. Yeah, I think so. You know, that yeah. would be great. You should uh, get in this touch. Is, this is the 75 episode. 75th. In Rock 10 on, months. Bro. In 10 months. Nice. In 10 countries. Nice. But that's why we're here to connect with people like you. It's been amazing to have you on the show. How, you, if you have a piece of advice to give to somebody that like you're joining crypto, that what will that, a, a young person, a young Chris, like, yeah, so in, in his or her fifteens. Uh, so you know, for for the younger community out there who wants to get involved in crypto, they keep two things in mind, right? So. If you're here to get rich, that's cool. A lot of people come here to get rich and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. There's not a problem there. But protect yourself. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Yeah. Okay? 
also remember that with volatility comes high highs and low lows. We're currently in a bear market and just when you think your token can't get worth any less, it will, leave it it will cut in half again and again and again. So don't be afraid to take some profits if that's what you're here for. If you are here to be a diamond hands yeah. and you want to invest in a community, it can work if that's what you want to do and that it, it, because Profit isn't everything to everyone. Being a part of a community is often the most important thing to someone. So find a community that you are really passionate about. Uh, you know, the people I see walking around here are from like Giveth and Public Goods Funding, Retro PGF, um, the Doing Good people. Like they're all building these communities that are are rich, not just in culture, but in actual personality and purpose. and purpose. And they're out here, they're helping fund. So get rich, go broke, do whatever you gotta do, oh, I like but, that. but find your community. You know, I'm surrounded here. We've got 20, 20 plus contributors from Bankless DAO who've come Amazing. to this. And all the people who I know from previous events, this to me is a heartwarming event. It makes me feel like there's purpose here and that's what you know that's more important than earning money than money I exactly please thank you so much for coming to the show all right official crypto yeah, thank you official, for having me official bankless DAO. we'll see so i'll see you in the next episode guys we'll probably be with we'll we'll chris in the other side of the world maybe singapore london who knows i'll see you soon guys bye bye